Hey there, it's me, Red Knight, the Heyday Farmer, and welcome back to another one of my videos. Right, now today's video is all about experience points, that wonderful activity that we are always asking about. So how do I get XP? Well, guess what? I'm going to give you lots of suggestions and show you where you can go and what you can do to gain experience points. I'm going to start very, very easy. I'm going to focus on the visitors first of all. Now, the visitors are these cute little people that come to your house and they request goods. Now, sometimes you you may want to serve them, sometimes you may not. Now at the moment there's lots of strawberries in the newspaper, so maybe she's good to turn around and serve. However, the coinage is kind of like blah. So I'm going to say no on this one. In addition to me saying no, okay, there is not really a lot of experience points that she gives me. Like 5 XP is like not really the best return for what I'm actually selling to her. Considering the coinage is much, much lower, I do think that needs tweaking and giving us a lot more XP there. Now, one thing I do like at the moment is this gorgeous truck event that's going on. Now, you can see there that the truck event has highlighted the experience points, and it's in a purple color. That's because it's actually double XP at the moment. So I'd rather use all of my resources on the truck and not on the actual visitors. Okay, I know the visitors can give some nice coinage sometimes, and and occasionally there are other experience based events so it could be double xp for the boat it could be for the town it could be for the visitors it could be for the actual truck as well all of these are great events so when they come up do them because you can pick up a lot of experience points rather quickly which allows you to level up within the game now i'm going to need more products for these orders so i've got loads on my machines that i produced and you know what when i collect them not only do i get the item going into storage but i get more xp as well oh my god like so much xp is coming to me within this game look at it and it's building up towards my next threshold so I only need another 10,000 points there and then I get that little mark there which is more goodies as well okay I need 140,000 to actually get to the next level but that's not a worry I will get there slowly but surely and then I will be rather happy now I have to get told okay why am I not selling items well actually because I'm using them at the moment with the truck event or with regular activities so I don't always have the ability to sell many items any items I do sell go rather quickly as well because at the end of the day, I'm more interested in gaining experience points through my truck or my town or through my boats. Selling them on the roadside stall is nice, but the coins are good, but I'm not really worried about that. Right, now again, collecting more produce. Now, the produce is good. Some of it's going to take a long time. Some of it will be done relatively quickly. Now, the only downside with it taking a long time is you've got to wait. But it's okay. You just load up and then you come back to it the next day. Hopefully, it's ready or maybe later the next night or something like that. It, it will be there. But when they are there, you just collect them again and again and again and again. And that's more experience points. Now, do be aware that some of these products give a lot more points than others. Now, if you're playing the game, focus on the items that take a short amount of time. Okay, the XP not be, may not be greater, but you can turn around a lot more within that time frame. If you're actually looking to gain more XP, but you're not within the game, then produce those goods that require more time, but give more return. So you need to actually check the Heyday Wiki for the amount of XP based on each product and on each machine. Do that, and it will give you a lot of key information that's really, really useful on that side. Right now, I'm collecting all of my goods here. Okay, my XP amount is building up slowly but surely. And that's taking me closer to the threshold. And these are just the machines. So regular machine-based activity, producing goods, making those goods, collecting those goods. Do you know what? It actually really does help. So at the end of the day, the easiest way to gain experience points within the game is just do your regular activities like I'm doing here. And that's only the machines I'm focusing on. And then I'm doing the truck orders. Look at that, 3,900. 990 points. Oh my god, that's wonderful. Send that one on its way. The goodies are being used, and that will take me closer to my threshold. And you know what? I'm going to level up very soon. Yay. More high level points there waiting to be done. I love these events. I really, really do. So take advantage. There's only a few more days left on the clock, so get them done as fast as you can. Now, if you do find you run out of resources, remember you've got your actual team. So you can go and request some goodies. Let them know why you're doing it, though. So in this case, I'm doing it for a video. Also, I'm doing it to actually get some experience-based points as well. Now, maybe my team members have it, maybe not, but rely on your team. Now, remember, it's not just about you requesting donations. You've also got to donate as well, so do keep it balanced. Otherwise, they're not going to give you the items you require, and your team will be like, hey, like this dude never donates, so why should I give him the items? Right, now I've just achieved the threshold, so that's it. I'm now on my last 
task here to actually go for the final level. So I need 130,000, and then basically I've got this next level. Can I do it in this video? Uh, no, it's only 22 minutes long, and as such, I'm not really going to be spending the next 22 minutes just trying to get that amount of targets level up. I can save it for later. Okay, now the next big item that gives you a lot of experience points very, very quickly is this gorgeous boat. They come every few hours, and then you can keep them for like 14 hours or turn them around quickly. Every time you fill a crate, you'll gain experience points, and I like that one. So do another one, that's more. Look at that, 297 points for every single one of those crates, and I can't do all of them, but it's okay. I can request the help, and then my friends get the XP. Yay! Okay, so it's a shared task, everybody. Super awesome, I like that one. So it's all about sharing the wealth and responsibilities as well but then again I must admit I do like keeping the XP for myself but oh my goodness me that's a lot of eggs right now I could produce those eggs or I can actually put them again out for support and service or I could go to the newspaper and maybe buy some as well let's see now my orders for request for help is up there so if anybody wants to support me my team can do so because I've actually requested help with the crates I've actually opened it up to my friends as well so make sure you add friends to your friends by everybody the more friends you have the easier it is to actually fill the crates now at the end of the day filling the crates is just one aspect there so it's all about actually getting the final boat xp as well right now while we're pushing the boat off to the side we're actually doing some of the animals here so i'm collecting my eggs for my boat now you'll notice as i collect the produce from the animals i get experience points as well and look at that one there yeah i get one crate done but three of them have been done for me so, Clary, thank you very much. You've just gained a load of XP. You're actually in my video as well. And I love your support here. So I've got one more crate to do. Then I get the full boat XP as well, which is even more beautiful. Now, those eggs I collected were great. They gave me a lot of XP. Now, I've got my animals down here. Now, if I feed them, there's no experience points, even though I'm using produce. But if I collect the produce, that's how I gain the experience points. So it's after they've actually done the task. Now, 5 XP there is not really a lot, considering the amount of time it takes to turn them around. This is what I mean. You need to actually look at what can be turned around more quickly to gain the experience points. Now, again, 5 XP, it's not a lot. Now, I do wish at some stage this were a jam. I think within the game, as an example, some of the tasks that we do require a long amount of time. And it would be nice to see the experience points being adjusted in the future, just to make it more balanced. And sometimes I do feel that some products give a lot more than they're actually worth, and others don't give enough. That was the only like negative thing I would say about experience points here. Now, my farm animals are not the only one. I've also got pets as well. And did you know that if you actually feed them, you get a load of experience points, more than you do from actually feeding your farm animals? Individually, that is. Now, okay, if I'm doing my regular farm animals, I get a lot of experience points in total because there's like 10 or 15 of those animals, whereas I've only got maybe one or two of the pets as an example. But the pets amount do really, really add up quite quickly. So you must make sure that you're feeding your pets regularly. And if you're turning them around and feeding them regularly, not only do you get the experience points, but you also get a load of expansion materials and other free gifts as well. And I like that one, just like this tape as an example. So that's really, really cool. So feed those animals, everybody. Collect the resources, gain more experience points. It's lovely. And look at that, 100 points there for some of those. Yeah, you can't get much better than that. So here you go, my beauties. Eat my carrots. Right now, crops. Crops are a fantastic way of gaining experience points. Now, depending on the crop itself will depend on the value there. Now, it's not really a lot for some of them. However, if you are mass producing and you are doing loads again and again and again, and then coming back to them later, you can really build up that XP quite quickly. And the more land you have, actually it can be rather nice. The only downside is trying to sell the resources in the newspaper. Now if you go to the newspaper at the moment it's overloaded with strawberries so it's not really helpful but then again because it's so full of strawberries you could sell lots of wheat and other products rather quickly because people need those and they can't actually find them so they will snap them up quite quickly as well especially since their actual farmland is full up as well. So pay attention to the actual newspaper see what's being sold and then adjust it that way now i've got another visitor there okay it's nice okay but no way am i selling my axes i'd rather keep those now the reason i want to keep those saws and axes because again later when i do chop down trees and bushes i gain more experience points as well 
Right, now I could probably get that crate done very soon, but I need some eggs for that one. So let's go and look at the paper. Ooh, look at those strawberries. A lot of tasks there. Now, am I going to see any good deals? If I find something very cheap, I will buy it. And then maybe, oh, hang on, strawberries for 140 there. I saw that one. Right, the actual sugar cane is relatively cheap as well, so that was kind of nice. I like that one, and yes, I did, 140. Let's go grab them. There's two there in the middle, so we're going to go one. Oh no, someone beat me to it. Let's do the other one quickly. So no more, no more, no more, no. Go to grab that one as well, and somebody's already bought this one. Uh, missed opportunity. I could have bought those and sold them for 504 coins as well. Am I going to buy the rest? Uh, no, there's no benefit for me. However, I can use those strawberries that are being sold, and actually actually produce some other goods which will actually sell for a lot more coinage and XP as well. So relying on the newspaper to gain you resources can actually allow you to make some other products as well, gaining more XP. Like the actual metal bars there that you saw can be quite useful to buy because you can make jewelry. Jewelry will allow you to get more experience points as well. Right, okay, now my boat is done. So look at that, 533 for the completion of the whole boat. Now I didn't do all the crates, it doesn't matter. I did enough there to gain both XP from the individual crates and from my friend helping me, allowed me to complete the boat. So that one's on its way. So we've got the truck, we've got the boat, we've got the farm animals, we've got the pets, we've got your regular crops as well. We've got a couple of other areas. Let's go and have a look. So number two is the town. Now you'll see there there's a lot of items that are green ticked. It means I can actually go over there now and complete those orders. Some can't be done. Am I concerned about that one? No, I can always send them away. Now, the town is a rather nice area, so I like this one a lot. And I do think the town is one area that is underused in relation to gaining experience points. You can get a lot of XP from these visitors. Okay, the reputation points is kind of low and very limited. But the XP amount is like really, really nice. You get the XP amount for the actual visitor and a building bonus as well. So adding those two together can be pretty awesome, if I do say so. So I would strongly recommend the actual town to a lot of people. The only downside is it does require a lot of resources and it can be kind of challenging on that side. But if you are building up your resources and producing your goods regularly, then not a problem. Now, I like to do the visitors I pick up from my hoodies. Okay, that's one building required. I also like to do the ones that are for two buildings. I turn those around relatively quickly. Three buildings I usually say no to. Now, that's my preference. You don't actually have to do that. You can actually do the three building people as well because it's three opportunities for experience points as well. Now, okay, when it comes to your actual upgrades for the building, now you can pick and choose the upgrades that you want. Now, my focus is usually visitor slots, then turnaround time, then experience and reputation. But my friend, they actually did experience points after they did the visitor slots. So they're gaining a lot more XP than I am, but they're actually turning their visitors around a little bit slower than I am. So there's swings and roundabout when it comes to choosing here. Now, if you look at this one here, as I said, okay, there's two lots of XP amounts here. So you've got the building and you've got the actual visitor bonus. So you'll see there as we slide through, you'll see the different options added up together. Okay, the reputation point is not so great, but the XP for the building and for the item, very, very nice. In addition to the coins as well. So you're making money at the same time. Only another 2,000 points to go and then my town will be a level 27. Yay, I can't wait. But that's a long way away from being able to get that one quite yet so like i said the reputation points are relatively low and i can't upgrade my buildings anymore until i reach level 27 so it's a catch 22 situation can't upgrade because i don't have reputation points and i don't have reputation reputation points because i've not upgraded yet hmm difficulties and by the way i love my new design i actually created this water effect design in my last live stream and it was actually good fun so i mixed now in with my sanctuary and my town area now in the sanctuary here your new animals give you xp as well so yeah so work on those puzzles everybody gain more puzzle pieces get those new animals and then again when you feed them that's even more experience points added to your total so 
super, super awesome. Now, I've got a load of orders there I can't do. No worries, I'll come back and do those later. Right, now, when it comes to actually doing tasks around your farm, okay, you can do a lot for yourself, but remember, you're not the only person there within your actual team. You can actually go over to your hoodies, as an example, and maybe give your hoodies a helping hand. Now, sometimes they need boats, okay, you can do the crates, gain the XP, like I had done to me earlier. So, there we go. Fantastic. I'll take those points. You're also looking for the revives as well. Revives around the farm as a help task can be very, very nice sometimes. Because the actual trees and bushes, when they are requesting help, give you a good amount of XP. And if you can find your friends that need a lot of bushes and trees done at one time, like, wow. During the actual tree hugging event, I gained so much experience points. It was fantastic. And I really hope they do another one like this again. Right, now, the last key area we've got here is the fishing area. Now, you'll see there I've got a load of traps down there, and my machines are empty. Now, I could click my actual produce here. It's giving me experience for actually producing the goods. And I'm about to fill up my actual tackle box. Oh, no, that's not so good. I guess I better start doing a little bit more fishing and production here. So I can make all of these nets. Again, the XP amount is very, very different. Right, I can make some more lures. Okay, that one's good as well. And if I'm making the lures, again, it's different XP amounts as well. But can I upgrade my tackle box? Not quite yet. I got a bit of an imbalance there with the actual nail. So that can wait till later. Right, now collecting my actual animals from the traps here, so the ducks and the lobsters, doesn't give me XP. The only way to get XP from these ones is from actually collecting them after they've gone through their full cycle. Now, it's a shame, actually. I'd rather have been given some XP for collecting them as well. It would have been a nice incentive. Now, one thing I do like about this is the fishing ability. So every single fish has a key weight and a key amount of XP as well. So depending on the lure you're using, depending on the fish you catch, gives you an additional amount of XP as well. So four for this one. And it's a nice weight as well, so that's not bad. I like catching those during the actual fishing events because they are heavy fish. Now, the actual event fish are much better. They give you a great amount of XP, but you're usually going to require some different colored lures, like this one here. So using a different lure, which was a green, 8 XP there. Okay, the fish is not so good. Nice little weight. Okay, it's a silver as well. So if I actually collect all of the actual weight categories, bronze, silver, and gold, I get diamonds as well. So the fishing area is nice. If you are lower than level 50, please make sure you open up all of your fishing area first before you focus on your farmland. After level 50, farmland is good, but earlier levels, you want all of the slots opened as fast as you can because the diamonds and the experience points can be really, really useful. So work the fishing area, everybody. Get it open. Right, so that's the fishing area, that's the town, that's the farm, there's the machine produce, there's the animals, there's the pets, there's the crops, uh, there's the special events as well, there's the visitors, whoa. You've also got the achievements as well, there's the mine as well, so there's a lot of different aspects within the game that will give you a load of experience points. And it's literally all just about playing the game. The more you play the game, the more XP you gain. So work your farm, work your town, work your fishing area, work your machines, and then you will be perfect in relation to the quantity of XP that you get. And you can level up quite quickly. In fact, I challenge you, gain as much XP as you can. Surpass my level. My friend Redder just actually overtook me recently, so I'm rather pleased about that, because it shows that my friends are playing the game and doing a lot more than I am as well. So keep doing it, everybody. In fact, even harvest your trees and bushes as well to produce more goods, because you get a lot of XP for for collecting the fruit as well. In addition to that, when you do have to chop them down, as I said, okay, using the saws and axes, you gain experience points as well. But look at that. I'm doing some wonderful items there for my machine, and when I get it done, that's 4,000 experience points there as well. I love this event. It's super fantastic. Some of those orders, though, are not good. So remember, with the orders, if you think there is not a good return on XP and coinage, bin them. You do not have to do orders if you don't like what's being requested. So remember this, you don't have to do everything. If you don't like what's being asked for, you don't like the return, just say no. Okay. And the game will accept your no request and will just literally send that order or visitor away. I mean, you're not sending the order away, you're binning the order, but the visitors do walk away. 
Right, okay, look at that wonderful XP, XP, XP. I like it. And I got some dead bushes. So let me show you. We're going to chop down those little bushes there. So there goes one. And kabang, it's gone. I like it. And four experience points. So even chopping down uses and gives me something. So there's many, many aspects here. I like it. I like it. I like it. Right, I think I need to start gaining more XP. So I think one of the best ways I like is to actually go to other people's farms. So going to other people's farms, I think for me, is one of the better options. My favorite options for gaining XP within the game are events. Okay, I think that's number one. Number two, I like the town, the truck, and the fishing boat. They are my next three points. The next one after that it has to be the revives. I think the revives are probably the next best way for me to gain experience points within the game. So those three key groups or three key categories I find are more rewarding. Okay, I love the machines. I love the produce. I get it. I like the actual heart feeding of animals. But for me, that's just a regular activity. It's these other ones that give the greater amount of XP that's more beneficial. But you do have to produce the goods first. If you don't make the goods, you can't gain the XP you can't do those ones that means you're going to have to start increasing your barn and silo so work on your barn work on your silo don't do both at the same time because you'll use up the space within your actual barn itself so balance that one okay make sure that you can do a little bit but not too much of the other like actually after this video I sold a load of resources to my hoodies because I had too much then I got a bit of an imbalance and it was causing me issues See here, I'm actually going around a few farms and helping out as well. Hopefully as well I can find some toolboxes as I look around, because toolboxes do give me the opportunity to gain a lot more. Now it's not just uh, actually helping people on my friend's bar, it's the newspaper as well. So if you can see somebody who needs help, head on over there. Sometimes you'll be lucky, you'll get there first, other times not. So maybe you'll even find some goods you can use for the event as well, so grab those. Now it doesn't really matter at the end of the day if you're paying full price for some of the resources, it's what you can turn them into that is better. So weigh up the cost of the product versus the product you're going to make based on the XP, then make your decisions based around that. Okay, right now, hopefully I've given you a lot of advice and tips and area suggestions and uh, basically telling you how to gain XP within this video. If you've got any other ideas or preferences or what is your favorite style for gaining XP, let me know in the comments below the video. In fact, why not just uh, leave some regular comments anyway about how you feel about the kind of XP options we get from some of them. Like maybe you're like me, you don't like the visitor XP amount, you want it to be increased. So give some suggestions as well for the Heyday team. I'm sure they would like to know some more. All right, well, that's me, Red, signing off for the moment. I'm back to my farm and gaining more XP within the event. Remember to send me some mail in the post. Here is my postal address in Japan. I'd love to get some postcards from you. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and as I said, do comment below. But I'll see you next time, and good luck with the XP event that's going on at the moment. See y'all!